Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen. I have a very exciting guest for you. After all the humming and hawing and watching of Maddox Price rip up into the sky clouds and then come crashing back down, we thought this was a great time to have one of their co-founders on. We have Sandeep Nailwal. Uh, Sandeep, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm thankful to, thankful to you in terms of inviting, you, inviting us here uh, to present in front of your community. Uh, I've heard that it's a very niche community and, uh, you know, very closely knit community. So I'm very, uh, you know, I'm blessed to be here and excited to talk to you. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. I know you've, you've probably got a pretty busy schedule building. Um, so let's just, let's just dive right in the conversation. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up working with Maddox. So give, give me a little bit of insight into your background and, and then we'll go from there. So basically, I'm, a, I'm also a computer science grad and uh, post that I've worked with Computer Sciences Corporation, uh, one of the largest, uh, uh, you, know, com pro, you know, software services firm from, uh, from US itself. Very long, like it is primarily one of the, one of the oldest, uh, you know, firms. It started like, I think 1965 or something and served NASA and all that very big organization. So I worked with their services division in India for around two years. Before I went out uh, and then did my, my management also uh, again in uh, management degree in engineering. And then I was working for Deloitte uh, for some time. And then post that I uh, was the CTO and, uh, you know, head of technology basically for uh, the e-commerce, e-commerce division of Wellspun Group. Wellspun Group is a $4 billion, uh, you know, uh, firm out of India. And uh, they are the exporters of, uh, you know, I think the textile group for uh, the largest uh, you know brands in us the walmarts and you know targets of the world so they have they had their e-commerce division in india i was the head of technology for them uh, post that i uh, you know raised a small amount of money and started uh, something called scope weaver which was a b2b services marketplace so uh, and then i've been a you know serial entrepreneur that way like matic is like my seventh or eighth uh, startup that way uh, and you know something in technology. Sometimes I even did like uh, as uh, like uh, you know businesses as uh, remote to technology, like you know uh, culturing honey, apiculture, that honey bee. You know this thing I invested in my brother's uh, this thing. So that entrepreneurship drive has always been with me. Uh, and then uh, so basically I started uh, Scope Beaver, which was a B two B services marketplace. Something like you can say Alibaba for India for services because the way China is in manufacturing, uh, Alibaba, like India is sort of in services. So I, you know, tried to create a B2B services marketplace uh, in the form of Scope Weaver. And it was doing well. I would not say it was scaling like exponentially and scale was the biggest issue over there. Uh, and, uh, but it was, it started doing a good amount of business, but it was not scaling. And I've always been interested in doing a scalable business like you know and ironical to that that matic today is actually into blockchain scaling but uh, you know i've always wanted to do a business which can actually scale and and i i wanted to experience that uh, you know exponentially growing uh, startup so i realized that okay this is not what 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 is my calling right so i would uh, you know do something else and i started you know reading more about the technology because at that time, my, you know, the technical co-founder had different interests than me. And I thought that, okay, I need to take care of the technology also. I need to be solid at tech part also. Uh, I used to be a programmer. So I, I started reading about artificial intelligence and all that. And then uh, it was too much of mathematics in that. And I thought that, okay, I have to maybe take a two years break and go into that. And uh, that, that's not what I'm looking for because I want a technical understanding and control over the product, but not like the you know, end to end this thing. So I, you know, stumbled onto blockchain and this was the time I already knew about Bitcoin back in 2013. I, for one brief period of time, I had also thought about, you know, using my laptop to mine. But by that time I realized that mining via laptop was, had already become, become like non-profitable. So I dropped it. So I said, okay, yeah, I know about Bitcoin. Let, let me start reading about it because there's a lot of noise. That was the around end of 2016 uh something like that so i thought that okay so i started reading this uh you know mastering bitcoin and fourth and fifth chapter into it that was the aha moment for me like oh shit this is the this is the game changing technology right this is basically the way which changes the way we human beings organize with each other and work with each other right it's not only about money bitcoin is the first implementation 
but apart from that blockchains fundamentally can change uh, the way we human beings organize with each other so uh, that was the aha moment from for, for me and from there on i fell into the rabbit hole and you know I'm still falling deeper and deeper so uh, you know i immediately uh, you know took a decision within like one week that okay i want to shut down my existing one and so i started reaching out to my clients say that said that i'm not going to support future projects i will provide you the support for the existing projects and which i provided over you know next 8 to 10 months uh, till the time those those clients were settled and all and i started uh, working on blockchain i went back to programming took a two months break went back to programming and started programming on bitcoin and then i you know initially i thought that okay for learning i will do some freelancing right so i started uh, you know doing some freelancing and this was the time when the ico boom came out right so everybody wanted to do an ico everybody wanted uh, ethereum smart contract and erc20 and things like that so you know i started you know getting a lot of projects starting started making a decent amount of money in fact by india standards making very good amounts of money and uh, you know i started gathering a team so i had a four five people team uh, doing services all good quality people so we were making good money but then again you know within 6 or 8 months i realized that again this is again services right this is not scalable and this is not what i came here for and that was again uh, the time of reckoning for me and i actually listened to naval ravikant i don't know whether uh, you know naval ravikant or not i i just I, you know it's funny i ju- i just met naval here in bali like 3 days ago i i've been chatting with him on whatsapp and i'm a huge fan of naval so yeah i'm like i am i am not a fan i'm like i consider him my guru and i'm like a disciple to him so in my own imagination i you know i have created a mental model of him and you know which is helping me a lot like these days like in all of these stressful works like whenever i am in i am faced with a stress situation i will think about and ask myself what will naval do in this situation and what does he say and <laughs> <laughs> right this is this is funny uh, but it's actually working for me so he actually gave one in the in, in the podcast with joe rogan he said that uh, you know basically i try to see good things in everything whatever even if something bad happens i'm trying to, i always try uh, you know since, since the last 8 to 10 years he tries to look good things in that and that's actually very helpful like i have like in the last two months i have my number of like let's say conflicts or arguments i've gotten into has come down like already it was very low uh, but has it has come down to almost zero like i don't argue with everyone anyone right now if somebody says something i try to see good things and they also understand my perspective so yeah so i i was listening to naval ravikant's uh, farnam streets uh, you know podcast and that podcast like every entrepreneur or even if non entrepreneurs everyone should listen multiple times that's like a you know the, the that's like the juice of multiple you know these uh, entrepreneurship and philosophy and you know mysticism spirituality everything you know juice down in one to our uh, podcast everyone should listen that i was listening to that and here i am and, and i was already in two to three weeks i was in this uh, conundrum that whether i should uh, do this uh, like keep continuing doing and making money with this services kind of thing or Uh, like what i wanted to do as you know in my life and build a product and all so i was listening to this and here there were like tears almost tears in my eyes that you know some of the things he said i said dude i need to go back i will not do this immediately within like one day i said my my partner that i'll be going out from this and i'll start exploring the product otherwise in the middle i will never be able to make it and then you know luckily at during that time i was already speaking to my uh, you know the co-founder jenty he is a very respected programmer in the ethereum space and uh, you know we started interacting more and more so you know we we then after a particular time we said that okay let's start uh, because he has built he had built a poc for matic and i said that okay i can contribute on this this part he is he comes from the programming side we had one guy who was in the product and we gelled well and we thought that we thought that okay we we already knew about each about you know about each other for quite some time because we were active in the blockchain communities uh, in whatsapp communities in india so we said okay let's let's jump in and let's make it a uh, uh, this thing yeah yeah um, brilliant you definitely need to follow uh, your passion and drive and i'll i'll definitely second the idea that involved been a, a huge treat in in the expression i don't want to i don't want to go too far there but He he told me when we were when when I met him, he's like, "You're gonna do, you're gonna do an hour of meditation every day for sixty days." He's like, "That's that's." I was yeah, like, "Oh, this is like, 
yeah i am also doing that and he like see that's not the bigger part the bigger part is that see i come from india it's a land of you they say that it's a land of gods right you you produce gods there that those, those gurus and babas and all that and you know every one of them have their own technique of doing meditation like meditations is very hard to do and those techniques are even hard to do he said that you know your meditation is like you know your mind is basically your inbox where you have multiple mails right and you have to do in, inbox zero so either you can do you use techniques like superhuman right or you can do a normal like just open each and every mail it will take you time one hour every day for 60 days but after 60 days your inbox will be zero and you'll be happy and that's like the guru mantra right so you know don't think of it like any meditation technique or whatever just sit there just sit there don't do anything whatever comes to your mind let it be just don't be, imagine too much and uh, you know let your mind wander it will be settled down right. yeah that's so, that's exactly the sentiment i've been going down um just letting the 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 mind the subconscious and the unconscious do its thing um so you guys have a fantastic team when i originally found well went with the bear family they'll know when we originally started to look at matic it was right as you guys did your ieo um you did about $165,000 in in for your pre uh, pre support raise around another 460,000 in your second one and then on the ieo i think you guys did around 5 million funding um which is not a large amount of money it's actually a uh, a fairly let's say um respectable seed funding amount you know i've seen companies that do um Three to five million dollars in seed funding that are backpack companies, um, so it's it's not out of the question. You guys raised a, a I think a respectable amount of money, which is also nice to see. We're like we're trying to raise like one hundred and fifty million dollars or something ridiculous. But what really caught my eye about your about your guys' um, project and one of the reasons why it actually made it onto our our long term watch list was because because of your team. You know, a lot of the times uh, where our group is full of technical traders. But we also look for things that have a, a, some type of fundamental basis to what we are interested in. Same with one of the reasons why we're interested in Raven. They're, you know, firing directly at private property, private equity, and capital markets, which are, are so seldomly done. So let's take a minute and, and really dive into what are some of the problems that Matic is trying to solve as a layer two plasma solution on Ethereum, and and what kind of progress have you guys made? On that, like, so what does that look like in terms of the benefit for the Ethereum main chain? And then tell us how. Yeah, I guess I don't. I don't want to like make the question too diluted, but how the proof of staking system works in relationship with the um, the functioning uh, layer two scalability. Yeah. So uh, so there are multiple parts to that question. So first, let me explain very briefly what Matic Network is. So Matic Network is a plasma based side chain solution so generally on layer 2 there are three bigger categories right one is uh, the uh, you know your uh, uh, state channels right second one is the side chains which includes plasma side chains also and then the third one is truebit which is very less followed so state channel is basically you know you can do some uh, basic transactions uh, off chain and then by and large there is a consensus amongst the community that uh, you know state channels are useful for some particular purposes the second one which is the side chain part which is where we fall into where you have a side chain uh, you know where all the computation and all that is happening and a snapshot of that is being put onto the main chain the two main things that plasma you know as a framework tries tried to achieve is that one that on the side chain uh, you need to be having uh, these uh, like the, the the side chain actors are somehow should be accountable and should be made accountable by the main chain itself right and then the people who are having the ownership of the assets and they are believing in the side chain to take their money onto the side chain they should have the uh, you know they should have the capability to withdraw or control their funds from the main chain itself because main chain is more trustable right ethereum main chain is fully trustable on the side chain you may not as a user something can happen and you may not trust the side chain right so you should have the a control full control over the over your asset via the main chain itself and the second and the, and the third and the last thing is that you should be able to verify some of the transactions that are happening on the side chain and if something is not happening correctly you should be able to challenge them on the main chain right that's the fundamental concept of plasma like in very two simple terms i will summarize one user should be able to have ownership via defined by the main chain itself second you should be able to verify and slash the bad actors of the side chain uh, via the main chain itself right so that there are two parts of plasma now 
many people have tried to attempt the side chains only problem is that those side chains are not plasma bagged those are like simple they create simple bridges and then the side chain once you take your money or the assets on the side chain then you are fully at the mercy of the side chain actors if side chain actors completely go off then you don't have any anybody to submit the proofs and get your funds back right then your your funds is lost and you are at the fully at the mercy of the side chain actors with plasma and the structure that i explained you the the side chain actors have their stakes have their stakes on the main chain the users have the ownership of the asset defined by the main chain and if users find something happening or anybody from the public can find anything happening happening wrong on the side chain they can prove it which is called fraud proofs they can you know challenge those uh, transactions on the main chain itself ethereum main chain and since the staking is also happening on the ethereum main chain you can slash them so basically you are getting the security of the main chain itself while having the scalability and the uh, you know the transaction speed of the side chain that's the basic idea of this the moment you have something like this you can actually uh, you know in terms of use cases you can have anything that you want uh, on the side chain anything that you are running currently on the ethereum you can run on the side chain so matic side chain also supports evm if anybody has a smart contract they can simply take that uh, you know smart contract and deploy it onto the uh, onto the matic side chain and you know boom like we have some of the applications which took less than 20 minutes to migrate to to matic and start using the matic as the as their uh, this thing so you know for for technically correct people if they are you know more technical people as i say that matic side chains are plasma side chains where the assets are fully plasma guaranteed and your general uh, you know smart contract transactions are backed by the proof of stake layer and if general if any one of those general smart contract transactions if they are you know valuable enough you can you can plasma proof them using uh, something called predicates so this is just for the technical correctness if there are any technical folks uh, you know watching the interview so yeah so basically you you achieve that so the moment you have that anything that today is being built on ethereum can simply leverage the scalability of the side chain and then you know can achieve because matic side chains have tps of 4000 to 10000 you know transactions per second which is like really huge you can build very smooth user experiences the gas fees for the users is around 100 as we are anticipating 100th of what uh, they are on ethereum and those can be achieved uh, and then you can build like very good user experience apps where users can uh, you know interact with those dapps you know freely and that's the kind of uh, you know dream that we are all looking for see i mean having decentralized applications which have experience levels as good as the centralized application that's the objective over there brilliant so you guys have brought uh, a faster transaction speed with the same security on the ethereum main chat and also um uh, basically you're saying you you've you've been able to reduce the the gas costs or or what were the gas costs of using the ethereum chain on, on the matic side chain um so can can you tell me i mean uh, i'm kind of a layman when it comes to technology conceptually speaking i can i can understand it let's say we've got um uh like a social media platform that wants to be built built on top you're going to try to register all the likes etc that are going on what type of co- um what type of cost to the the application would you be looking at like if say i wanted to build a, a dap in the first place again remember, remembering that i'm technically in proficient <laughs> at some of this stuff so it's kind of, it might be a, it might be a weirdly phrased question but i know with the lowered fees but the same security and the faster the speeds what kind of things can we now achieve in the dap world that we couldn't have achieved on 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 ethereum as it was Yeah so let's take a very simple example of uh, sorry yeah let's take a very simple example of uh, you know having a decentralized twitter itself right if you do it on ethereum for every tweet that you are going to make you are going to spend let's say 50 cents right 50 cents for one tweet nobody is going to use an application like that right so uh, i mean that's not a that's not a viable feature similarly i mean anything you are doing if you are if you have to spend uh, you know 30 cents to 50 cents or at times at, at the time of congestion uh, you know maybe 2 to 3 dollars for one interaction with the dapp that's not going to happen only that can only work for you know large defi related things where you are lending 10000 dollars for small kind of dapps that's not possible so 
doing the same transaction on ethereum you could do it in in like 100th of cost so like you could do it in 0.5 cents or even less than that on matic network like 0.5 cents like that means that in one dollar uh you know you could do you could do maybe 500 to 1000 transactions and you know the other thing is that when people think of dapps they think that everything should be on blockchain like blockchains are not not like normal database when you are building a block building an application you don't want everything to be on blockchain you want some things like where you want the transparency and you know trustlessness and everything on the blockchain so for those kind of stuff where let's say there's a simple game and they want the users to own their own nfts and only when they get go into the game arena they get deposited into the game when they win some asset back they get the asset immediately back right and there are no conditions like you know we recently saw that blizzard blizzard banned few few chinese players because they spoke out against uh, you know hong kong and things like that right so those kind of true ownership and the you know transparent kind of execution uh, you know uh, benefits that blockchains propose only those use cases or those scenarios need to be put on blockchain so i think for that kind of scenarios uh, you know on matic side chain you can do almost everything that you want to do there are uh, you know a large number of applications which are building currently if you see i personally say that we would already be even though we are like rank 90 in terms of our uh, in terms of our uh, you know market cap or whatever but by the number of applications that are building on matic we would be easily top 10 uh, platform worldwide like you know we on above you will only find ethereum eos tron cosmos or ontology all like big shots and then maybe some other projects like you know loom network or something like that which come out of the name right and apart from that like you could easily be able to count like 10 platforms and you could easily be able to include us in that so uh, once we go live somewhere in february and march you would see a large number of applications which are already there either on beta mainnet or testnet they will start launching uh, onto our uh, you know mainnet so uh in terms of our adoption we are like one of the largest and the fastest growing platform in the space and, and so just just again to clarify because i do lack some of the technical aspects here engine itself the nft provider they run on ethereum so they could just very easily transport their code onto the matic okay. chain and then uh, again remove costs yet keep some of the uh, a lot of the main security features of the main chain inside of their ecosystem correct absolutely absolutely and not only that they could also keep their entire token economics uh, absolutely intact and while still being on the team so they the, you know it reduces their biggest uh, challenge in the scalability while they don't lose out on any business proposition that they have so i guess um one of the last questions i'll i'll leave here because I, i like i said one of the the things that stood out when we kind of deep dived matic in the first place was your team was really good and that the the potential for the scaling aspect of uh, ethereum was a, was a double win because it it helps ethereum in the long run to maintain its value um looking for layer 2 solutions um what are some of the biggest roadblocks you guys see and if you overcome them what other what other benefits might we see in terms of scalability so um in terms of the roadblocks i don't think that technically we are we we have any pending blocks you know road blocks because when we came out in public by that time almost all our uh, research uh, kind of uh, things were already done back in april and now we are in implementation phase i don't see that there are many technical challenges in terms of business challenges uh, like we come from india right and it has been difficult for us to you know penetrate the global space and uh, you know we don't have the kind of leverage that the silicon valley vc based projects get early on right they get a lot of traction and a lot of name just because you know some of big vcs invest in them and uh, you know that we had to fight back and everything so only roadblocks i will not say roadblocks i would say the continued challenges are to get more and more adoption and get more and more dapps and the biggest road map yeah so that's a good question actually in that sense if i see that the biggest road map with not only us the whole you know space is that people are saying that there are thousands of blockchain project right all everybody is building their own blockchain but nobody is building applications on top on top of those blockchain right the problem is that nobody is funding those 
applications on blockchain that also is that's like currently the biggest pe problem that people are not realizing six months from here when all of these vc like vc chains like as vitalik says that there are professor coins and vc coins right and uh, you know when they come out and they, he says that there there must be a ma marketing coin which is actually able to get traction and which i think uh, coincides with the, you know having uh, apart from having a strong technology we believe that you know the ecosystem building is the most important part and we have taken a lot of strides in that but uh, you know i'm saying that in 6 months when these all professor coins and vc coins are out there in the market and then people realize that nothing is being built on top of them all that is being built is sponsored by them only no third party is building on them then the 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 in the whole industry and the vcs are going to realize that oh this is this is going nowhere because there is actually no fundamental progress right in terms of adoption there is there are no users we are only building the technology platform so having the dap funding is i think is the biggest challenge that industry is going to face right now nobody is uh, realizing that because we have other things to face right now the moment these you know coins are launched in the market we will realize that you know there will be a big problem that no dapps are being funded and the vcs are expecting chains to have adoption and grow in value but there are no dapps because they, none of them are getting funded so i don't know like the problem is that the dapps don't have solid business models the dapp tokens also don't make too too much sense right now i don't know how that problem is going to be solved in in the growing you know in in coming time right? yeah. so that i think is the biggest roadblock Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really great point. Um yeah, I you know, I I I actually think I know of a few ways we can solve that adoption problem, but a big part of it is the integration of the average user to not really know that they're using a blockchain application in the first place. And and I where I where I would where I think I I de I 100% agree with you is that when you have all these technologists trying to build protocols, they lack to send a they lack the understanding that the only reason a protocol would have a value is if it makes someone else's life easier and has real social implications and a lot of these are great technical ideas but unless the average person really feels a benefit to their life when it, whether it's saving them time or helping them accomplish some task they're not going to care and it's it's going to lead to it's going to it's going to be like a never ending street to nowhere um I think you made a really great point there that the ecosystem itself needs to find ways to lean into social adoption which has very little to do with technology if if, if anything almost at all um from you know in the in the past we we've, we've seen um communities overtake other better technologies because of the community I mean to the tape cassette over Betamax and DVD over Blu-ray um and multiple times I mean MP3 over wave formats like people just choose what's more convenient not what necessarily sounds better or like has a yeah. has a better technical quality to it um this is a, it's a very interesting uh place to, to be a part of now for the last part of the conversation um because I I feel you answered all of our our technical questions there uh very very well was to go into some of the the price movements and before you and I started this conversation one of the things you had mentioned and I thought it was a very eloquent way to say this is that normally early on in in a company's startup you don't have any public exposure to um let's consider uh like the the digital trading of, of the the underlying protocol so you're all, you're you're beholden to a very difficult part that is pretty much happens to any company once they go public which is the scrutiny of people that don't know a whole lot about business necessarily um can you tell us a little bit about the experience that you've had over the last month with uh, i mean Maddox price in in early april had a massive run up and a big and a, and a big fall down as well can you tell us about this most pre, this most recent price experience and how um your team uh viewed some of those things that were going on how you felt about it and and what you may thought it uh, actually had maybe even come from mm -hmm. yep so uh basically uh, uh the you know what happened is that as you already said that you know our price had a lot of like a big run up uh you know and that that was also in a market when everyone was bleeding right and only the matic was like you know constantly going up and then a lot of it it was fueled early on was fueled by fundamentals because a lot of games like large scale and uh, top games actually moved from uh, competitive uh, like our competitive platforms to matic uh, and then you know there are few big protocols that are currently building on matic and then that 
information uh, also some people got so of course there was initially the boom was uh, you know forced by uh, by an by a fundamental uh, you know uptick and you know the price went well it became like 2x 2.5x that all that is okay till that time but you know from that point onwards it became like really crazy like it it kept going up kept going up and it went like 3.5x from the base of the rally and then you know everybody was expecting a correction for sure uh, but then you know suddenly uh, in the night of i think on monday uh, i don't recall the exact date on on the on that funnily but uh, you know suddenly in 10 minutes two candles the price was dumped uh, you know 70% and a huge amount of tokens were uh, you know uh, sold on the market so uh, and and you know everyone uh, and there was this was also uh, also uh, you know it felt it felt like coordinated with uh, you know once the dump happened there were a lot of fud accounts there may be a normal community accounts also but a lot of fud accounts started saying some faulty things that oh team is doing this and this and that started posting unsubstantiated and uncalculated uh, post from the ether scan and then later on when we woke up and we started countering the fud and we you know at that time these people simply retracted after 2 3 hours saying that oh apologies we did not count this and that and then but that time but by that time the damage had happened right so and then we had to go into more you know on that on that damage control mode uh, speak to each and every and that's what we are even now we are doing reach our our our, our objective is to reach each and every uh, individual uh, you know who got affected by this price dump especially our community members because we are a community project right we don't as you said that we don't have too many vcs with us our most of our holders are retail holders and we wanted to reach out to each and every one of them explaining them what would have happened even we don't know what exactly happened right it's all you know it's all speculations that okay what we feel is that we since in spite of being a small uh, you know uh, uh, small market cap project and in spite of uh, you know uh, all this we had a 350% uh, uptick and plus we are listed on all these exchanges with margins and you know your uh, uh, futures position listed on some futures exchanges uh, i think it it made a good target for these whales to you know take large amount of short positions uh, on the margins uh, via margin borrows and the uh, you know the short uh, short positions in the future market and then dump on the spot price thereby profiting from their short positions and margin positions that's what we feel and even binance team internally you know uh, investigated and they also said that it seems to be some uh, large uh, traders you know panicking and things like that and that that may have happened because after this large price uh, uptick uh, you know there would be a large amount of holders and then once two or three bigger ones uh, orchestrated this you know their stop losses would have hit uh, you know longs of people uh, on the on the on, on the long sides would also be li- would have been liquidated that would have also contributed to the sell volume that's what we believe but we are again we are no market uh, experts no, there um, are relations to that and i'm yes. reaching out to a lot of parties public parties who can analyze the public data and then you know come out with the explanations for all of this how would have how it, it would have happened Yes, yeah, Sandeep, you know I just I just wanted to share my sentiments there and actually take a look at something. Um so I I actually agree with you. It was my my first thought was not that it had anything to do internally. It was that it had specifically to do with the margin trading. So for everyone that can see my screen right now, we have Harmony, Ravencoin and Matic all open on Binance. Um at least in terms of the tra- of what the trading volumes look like and the, the price at that time they're all open on the 4 hour and as you can see we saw all all of these tokens have a very sim- like a very similar rise we saw 40% in harmony we saw 50% in raven although as you had mentioned we saw a significantly higher run almost 225% again this is in bitcoin prices i don't trade in us dollars um but what was interesting here is that there was a lot of volatility leading into all of these markets uh, almost starting at the exact same time and then falling on the exact same day and what was interesting to me because as a as a technical analyst as well was the fact that this was not just in matic you saw it in multiple tokens but these are all market caps of around 100 million dollars so if if just a few big players had 20 million dollars each we'll say 10 of them and we've got a 200 million dollar play 
in here, I, I think you're absolutely correct that what you ended up seeing was a, a very well coordinated um, short squeeze after they had probably taken long positions during the consolidation period. I mean, if we just look at Matic alone here, the consolidation period, uh, this is showing harm me one sec here. Um, the consolidation period for Matic was actually almost uh, three to four months um, in terms of its, uh, of its growth. Uh, yeah, here we had from, let's go to the daily just for fun. Yeah, you had uh, from June and July all the way up until October as a, as a rough consolidation period before you saw this, this big run up. I mean, you could have been accumulating tens, to, tens of millions of dollars of token here on a very slow, consistent basis without b bumping the price up. And then because it's still such an, a liquid market with a very small market cap, getting the price to run up again probably wasn't all that difficult for them. So it's, it's a, what's really interesting to me is that, you know, I, I'm the last person to want to cry wolf, especially against, uh, a, you know, a, a team. Um, and I think the kind of the misunderstanding of newbies in these markets. Like I, I, like I mentioned, I have friends that have hundreds of millions of dollars of assets in their portfolios. It, it doesn't, it's not that unlikely that you had a few people that were either, whether they were coordinated or not, they were um, riding the same waves. And at the same time you saw Harmony, Fetch, Seller, One, Matic, all floors drop out from underneath them. So it was just a well, um, a, a timed, play and they were all playing in the same markets because it's maybe only like a million people in the blockchain space, maybe five or 10 million people in the blockchain space at large, right? So we know that it was, it was probably just bad timing for you guys. I'm sorry that there was all this FUD went out around your team. Yeah, many, they, like the people who understand, they also realize that there is nothing to gain for the team. Uh, you know, for a team like us, which is backed by Coinbase, you know, listed on Binance Launchpad, and all that stuff, like, you know, doing one, you know, big wave of selling our tokens and then, you know, making some few pennies out of it. It doesn't make sense, right? We could, we have the potential to be a, you know, multi-billion dollar blockchain in future, a multi-billion dollar token as an asset in future. You know, these, these, this money that somebody would have made is actually peanuts, right? So there's nothing for us or even Binance, like we are a Binance Launchpad project, even for Binance, nothing to gain out of it, right? But still, yeah. you know, it is understandable when people are angry, they want to blame on someone, right? So they can't blame it on, you know, some invisible whales they don't know, right? So they want people and people who are hurt, they actually want to, you know, give it back to the people who they can give it to. So of course we, then Binance, like, you know, we come in direct line of that, uh, you know, this thing. So. So that's, that's, that's one part. Also in terms of like Matic, when you said that, you know, that, that happened, it's very right. And you are right in saying that because Matic is almost like the crown jewel of Binance Launchpad, right? It is the most, uh, you know, like most successful project in terms of its all time high, even its present, uh, you know, value by, from the ICO price and also in terms of the liquidity and volume. So if somebody wanted to attack, let's say Binance Launchpad projects or whatever, or, you know, if you wanted to do a short, uh, this thing on uh, Binance Launchpad, Matic is the first, you know, this thing. If you are able to crash Matic, all of them are going to crash because when Matic was rising, most of these coins, like most of these other projects also rose because people said, people always think that, okay, once Matic is rising, now the other ones will also rise, right? So something similar to, to this happened, uh, you know, at the time of our, uh, you know, uh, uh, Binance Launchpad launch also that you know when once matic went up all the other launchpad projects also started going up and when it goes down other launchpad projects uh, are also uh, you know they also come down so you know if you were a, a whale imagine like you 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 control one asset you do this activity on matic and while you are you are doing you are shorting other uh, this thing also and uh, making money on that too so you know it's like a win win game everywhere for them yeah, I th um, you know, you, you made a, another point there that any of the Bear family that are a part of our private newsletter would recognize um, in when you guys had launched, because there were other tokens that had launched before you, but when we were watching, we saw an identical movement between Seller and Fetch and, and One a lot of the times as well that you probably have um, on, on, the, on, the, on the Binance platform itself, just a few players that have enough money to move small market caps very noticeably i mean again like a hundred million dollars like like even even your total market cap is 
it's not, it's like one fourth of my friend's portfolio. It's like, how do you, so it's, I mean, it's still a large amount of money to someone who has nothing. Um, but it, in terms of, uh, yeah, scale the scalability of companies. Like I think, um, Louis Vuitton does $9 billion a year in revenue. Silk almond milk does around 10 to 12. So we're talking about chump change and you're right, or pennies as, as you put it. And, and I think a lot of people in the, in the blockchain sector don't recognize that because they just don't have a lot of capital market experience and understanding that there are, it might just take a few big players to want to run in. And, you know, maybe they, they're like, okay, great. Cause when we first found Matic too, it was one of the, like alongside seller and fetch it was one of the only tokens on the Binance research page that had four stars and above. So they may have just been like anything that has four stars and above on Binance will just throw like, let's just throw a $500 million into it and see what happens. <laughs> like, you know, so it's, it's, it's what we're since still such a small nation space that it's, um, it's, it's, yeah, it, I, it's too bad that, that, you know, people got it confused and, th and thought it was your team, but yeah, it's, it's very likely that it was, it was just a few um, key players who, who see value in this sector and are trying to, trying to play with, you know, the growing, the growing space that it is. Um, so Sandeep, I think you guys have a fantastic future ahead of you. Um, I'm really excited to, to see, hear more about any of the progress you make. So if you ever want to come back on the show again, we'd be happy to have you and your team. Um, is there any final thoughts you want to leave us uh, out with about what we can look forward to, where everyone can check you guys out to join your Telegram channels? We'll leave all those in the, in the descriptions below, but why not, why not give us the vocal version as well? Yeah. So basically, I would like to say that, you know, all the people, uh, I am very thankful as you told me that, you know, many people from the bear community are actually, you know, following Matic and, uh, you know, they would be seeing our announcement channels and what all, uh, you know, great work we are doing with the third party projects, which are building on Matic. And I want to leave with that thought only that, you know, it's our very firm belief and, you know, it's, it's our, uh, you know, resolution that we would be the largest and the most adopted blockchain. That's what we are aiming for. And if we are able to do that, we will be making Matic big as well as we'll be helping Ethereum to scale right in, in, in a long way. So, you know, that's what the, that's the thought I want to, uh, you know, leave with the people that do watch us for our adoption, not for these, you know, small price movement. These are very small, small time ones, uh, but watch out that what we really do to the space in terms of its fundamentals. Right. Uh, beautiful. I, I love it. I really, I really look forward to it. And I'll, um, I look forward to chatting uh, with you guys again in the future. Um, remember guys, give us those thumbs up. If you like this content, all of this, the links for Matic, their telegram channels, their Twitter, all that stuff. I will leave that in the links in the description down below. If you guys have any thoughts, questions, or comments that you'd like to ask me or Sandy, please leave them in the YouTube comments. I'll do my best to answer them or forward them as well. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Enjoy all your problems because one day you won't have those either. Sandy, it's been an absolute pleasure and I hope to see you again soon. Oh, and uh, I'm definitely going to call I'm definitely going to rewind this podcast at the end of it. And I'm going to record the video of you saying that Naval was like a guru to you. And I'm going to totally send, the, send that to him on WhatsApp after we're done this conversation. Please, please, please do. Please do. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Um, have yourself a great night. And then I'll, I'll keep you on just for a few minutes afterwards. Bear family. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys on the other side. Yep.